Hello, I'd like to talk to you about a publication that you may or may not have heard of called the Oracle of Reason. It's a publication from the 1840s in England, and it was put out for just a couple of years, and it was an atheistic publication. It was put out by two gentlemen by the name of uh, Southwell and Holyoke. And uh, I'd like to just give you a little bit of information from the preface to the uh, few years that the publication was available. Because I think it tells us a little bit about the publication and uh, what the publication was really about. It says that the publication was put out in the face of much difficulty and danger. And this turned out very much to be the case because both of these gentlemen were incarcerated. Uh, Mr. Southwell was incarcerated for a year and Mr. Holyoke for six months. The publication was a attack on supernaturalism and just uh, really the only open attack on supernaturalism that had ever really been public and recorded up until that time. So it was just quite shocking to the people of England at that time. The preface goes on to talk about the uh, fact that Christianity had been incorporated with uh, the state government uh, for quite some time. And as a result of that, the availability of, dis of opinions that were different from Christianity were very hard to come by. People were free to believe whatever they wanted but they weren't really free to discuss these views. In other words, you had freedom of conscience, but not really freedom of expression. You could think whatever you want, but you just couldn't talk about it. However, if you're going to have any kind of real freedom, you have to be able to discuss these differences of opinion. And this was viewed by these gentlemen as a real weakness of Christianity. I mean, if you can't stand up to any kind of scrutiny, it really does say something about the strength of your point of view, of your beliefs. I mean, why not let other people criticize and discuss your point of view? There's certainly nothing wrong with that. If you have a good point of view, and people are going to discuss it, then your point of view will be shown to be a strong one. It goes on to talk about the people of the past from the Greek and Roman societies, and that there were a couple of famous atheists that were condemned uh, Aristotle was banished for unbelief, and Socrates poisoned for being an atheist. But by and large, the Greek and Roman societies were very tolerant towards atheists. Their basic view of uh, religion and atheism was that as long as the people were amused and employed to each his own, as long as everybody was getting along during the day, having a good time at night, there's no problem if there's no problem. Epicurus, Epicurus the uh, Stoic philosopher, was uh, openly espousing his views, his Stoic views, and uh, he was not bothered. He was uh, openly atheistic. The poet uh, Lucretius also openly atheistic without any sort of concern. The preface also goes on to discuss 
something that sounds a great deal like our late friend Christopher Hitchens. The priest craft poisons all. Nothing escapes its polluting, its withering touch. This is really a big target of the publication. They discuss two basic views of life, the better to be safe or the better to be honest. And these two gentlemen take the better to be honest approach to be sure. We see this because their safety is definitely put, uh, is definitely put to test. It goes on to talk about uh, their view that forbearance is sometimes a crime. To simply uh, put up with and observe evil, uh, as they viewed it, was something that they were not willing to do. And uh, that was really very much the reason that they came up with this publication in the first place. They uh, thought they had something to say, and um, this magazine, this uh, newspaper that they had, was their way of communicating their points of view. They go on to talk about uh, superstition is the great evil. They realized that it was not necessarily religion per se. It was the underlying process of faith and superstition that gave birth to religion. And uh, all manner of just irrational thinking in general. Morals, politics, physical science, all are polluted by superstition, particularly religious superstition, but any kind of superstition. Interesting quote here, superstition is the tyranny of tyrannies and its priests, the tyrants of tyrants. If every priest was at the bottom of the Red Sea, society would be infinitely more happy than it is at the present moment. Now, they weren't calling for anyone to be uh, killed or harmed here. I think they were just uh, pointing out that uh, certainly without the presence of the uh, apparatus to spread religion, uh, English society would have been better off, and I don't think that there's any doubt about that. And to show that, and they go on to discuss the fact that in England at that time, and in indeed, all over the world, the thinking was really a matter of one superstition against another. The Catholics against the Protestants. One group of Catholics against another group of Catholics. One group of Protestants against another group of Protestants. The Methodists against the Presbyterians. The Presbyterians against some other group. Uh, they say that there is a different group of Protestants as there are as many group of, groups of Protestants as there are days of the days in the year. Uh, that's conservative at this point. There's well more than uh, 365 different uh, denominations of, uh, of so-called Christians in the United States and all over the world. And of course all of these are convinced of their own validity and some deficiency in that of their counterparts. They all laugh at each other and the atheists laugh at them all. It's interesting to notice that we certainly have no difficulty with each of them finding some problem with the other religion, but for some reason society seems to have a problem with the atheists that uh, find fault with all of them. If you want to know what's wrong with the Catholic religion, simply ask the Protestants. If you want to know what's wrong with the Protestants, ask the Catholics. If you want to know what's wrong with Christianity, ask the Muslims. Ask our Jewish friends. If you want to know what's wrong with all of them, ask the atheists. 
and yet the atheists are somehow viewed as different in the sense that the atheists are not permitted to criticize the other group. Well, you can see how silly that is. And I might add that this will be the slow death of religious superstition in the long run. The fact that the internet has allowed religion to be seen for what it is, a man-made social activity of people to have criticism one for another. People are waking up to that and we are going to see religion continue to decline, continue to suffer. It's definitely on the decline in the United States as it has been in uh, Europe and the only place on earth really that it's growing now is in Africa and it will eventually decline there as well. Atheists reject supernaturalism in toto as a principle and as an ideology. Now these gentlemen go on to also uh, have a problem with a general deism. Now, unfortunately, deism seems to get a bit of a pass and almost somewhat of a degree of acceptance. Deism is somewhat of the idea that, well, we believe there's some sort of higher power out there, something that uh, maybe is beyond our understanding some spirituality, some higher power, something that gives meaning to it all. There must be something more than the material that we see around us and so forth. Some, something higher, something mystical, this sort of thing. Well, these gentlemen will have nothing of the kind because they view this as a blending of the naturalism and the supernaturalism. And to be sure, there are definitely going to be times where we're not going to be able to clearly decide where we know things and where we don't know things. We're not going to be able to clearly delineate where, we, where our knowledge begins and ends. But that does not mean that the natural world and the supernatural world should be treated as equal partners in this endeavor. They give a uh, example here of the so-called supernatural posse as a reason to sort of uh, bring into question this entire uh, supernaturalism. Uh, why a deity would allow a, a supernatural posse, angels, devils, and other superior intelligences. Why would a deity allow or need angels? Why would a deity dispatch an angel to do something? This is silly as if the deity being all-powerful would not be able to do something. Again, this just shows that the deity itself is a man-made construct as is this agent, this angel, this, this uh, demon that the angel is going to be doing battle with. And they give a bit of a mechanism here. They say that mere repetition and presentation of these ideas is the one of the reasons that these ideas are uh, as successful as they are. They say that um, what uninstructed men hear or see at regular and often recurring intervals 
however absurd or revolting in itself, soon ceases to amuse or offend. Habit is stronger than nature. Tell a man anything, however absurd, every morning before breakfast, and he will believe you in the long run. And I think there's definitely some truth to that. Contrast is made between atheism and supernaturalism. Atheism is essentially anti-supernaturalism. It's just a recognition that there is no reason to adopt a supernaturalism. The root of the problem with religion is supernaturalism. They go on to discuss that in politics and government that we will not see any real reform in our political system until the underlying supernaturalism and superstition are removed from the political process and the governing uh, first. So uh, we could get rid of all of the current Republican Party and all of the current Democratic Party, for that matter. And if they're simply going to be replaced by other people that are going to have the same supernaturalism, they're all going to have the same faulty way of thinking, they're all going to be elected by a population that uh, does not have the ability to uh, reason, but instead accepts things on faith, we're going to end up with the exact same government that we have now. And so education uh, at the root must be the way out of our problems, if there is going to be a way out. And until that does happen, we're going to find ourselves back in this same boat election after election. Because indeed it is the people that continue to believe things on faith, put people in power that also adopt policies based on faith and continue to have the poor results that we see when we look around in our daily lives and have the outcomes. I think this is a publication worth looking at, and uh, I'm going to spend some more time looking at it. The Oracle of Reason, uh, it's in the 1840s in England. Uh, I encourage you to take a look at it. Uh, obviously, it's before much of the modern science. It's before DNA. Uh, it's before a lot of the biochemistry that we know about. Uh, it's before Einstein. Uh, a lot of the modern physics, so um, uh, their, uh, some of their scientific thinking is, um, uh, is a bit outmoded, but it is something that's interesting, and uh, a lot of the atheistic ideas are there, even if some of the science is a little bit outdated. So uh, if you get a chance to uh, take a look at it, I think it'll be worth your time. Take care.